Once again, can we praise and thank God for bringing us all together once again at this, at, at, to have a convention after all we've gone through in these last two, almost three years now. Let's give God thanks and praise once again, shall we? Hallelujah, 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 Lord, hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah, oh. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we also thank you for all you have spoken thus far. The worship, the moving of your spirit, the testimonies, Lord. And now we ask you to bless your word into our hearts. Speak to us. Continue to work in our lives. Get us ready for your soon coming, oh God. Now we give our attention to thy word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time. Amen. Praise be to God. And again, we thank God for allowing us to have this convention after all we have gone through in these last few years. And it's so good to see the saints, those that are here. And, and we thank God again for his mercies. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Uh, before I begin, I do want to bring greetings for all, all the saints there in Dominican Republic and Haiti. They do send their greetings and love for all, all of you. Praise be to God. Tonight, we want to look at um, Acts chapter 2. And I believe that this is the need for the hour. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 2, and we're going to read a verse that we all are familiar with, and that's verse 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Praise be to God. The title of our message tonight is The Great Outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Praise be to God. And we've been praying in these days also, in the light of the pandemic, that what we need now is an act of God. We all know what's happening in our nation and around the world. We have seen so many things change so quickly and still changing. Even now in our dorms, in two of the buildings, we, we no longer have keys. We, everything now is <laughs> the telephone. <laughs> and all these things we know are pointing to the end times, the Antichrist, etc., etc. And uh, all the problems we have in here with the gas prices and uh, the Prices of my homes and try and get everyone to buy an electric car, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, things that are happening with the children and the young people, it's awful. And what we need at this hour, we need an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, like the songs we were singing not too long ago. We need a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit, like the world have never seen before. And we've been praying this prayer for months. And we believe that in these days, we're going to see an act of God. Hallelujah. And God's going to prove and show that he's the almighty God. And he's on the throne. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. And in this verse, notice it says, and it shall come to pass in the last days. And we all agree we are in the last days. This is the last moments of time. And God said... I'm going to pull out of my spirit. Praise be to God. And we, we, we have been praying about this pouring out of the Holy Spirit. It's not just being baptized in the Holy Spirit. This is going to be an outpouring unusual in such a way that it's going to shake the whole earth. Hallelujah. Because our God is on the throne. Hallelujah. And when we see these things happen... 
We should rejoice, not be afraid and run and fear. Praise be to God. Because we know the word of God says these things must happen. They must come to pass. And we thank God also that God has so far counted us to be a part of what he's doing in these last days. And he's going to use every one of us. Praise be to God. He says, in the last days I will pour out of my spirit. And I was praying in these days and few weeks as we were praying for the convention. Lord, um, uh, what do you want to do? And I just felt God speak to my heart. I want to pour out my spirit. Hallelujah. And that's what we need. We need an act of the power of God. We need the mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And he says that he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. That doesn't only mean the saved. That means the unsaved. All flesh. And upon the unsaved, he's going to pour out a spirit of conviction of sin. Hallelujah. And repentance. We're going to see a great harvest in these last days. Praise be to God. And I believe in this convention, as we were singing to earlier about the latter rain, it's going to rain. Hallelujah. Every meeting we come to, the morning praising, the morning service, the fasting and prayer, the youth meetings, the young adults meetings, the evening meeting, the night prayers. We are going to experience in these days more and more and more and more of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We are going to see the word of God come to pass. And as we heard last night in the parking lot when Pastor came, two things really spoke to my heart. He said that we have to pray because the prayer of a fervent man, that prayer, that fervent prayer is going, one translation says, is going to do much. Hallelujah. And I know in these days, as we have gone from different places, the people of God have great needs. And I believe this is going to be the convention where something must happen to you and me. Praise be to God. We must not leave the way we have come. We got to experience God. Praise be to God. And God's going to do that. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. And the second thing pastor said also, that we must pray fervently and believe. Hallelujah. We must believe. And we're going to see a little later here in this message how God is looking for faith. And we must believe. And maybe our faith has been under attack in these days through sicknesses or situations. God is going to revive our faith. Hallelujah. And in this verse, as we go, before we go, go on, again he says, and I want us to really uh, concentrate on this. I will pour out my spirit. Hallelujah. This, there's going to be a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And it says here, Upon your sons and daughters. That speaks about the young people. In these days, God is going to bring a mighty revival among the young people and our children. And they're the ones to be the ones to finish the work. Because a lot of us, we're going to go home to be with Jesus. Hallelujah. And if the Lord tarries, they're going to be here. So that's why we must continue to reach out for our children and our young people and believe God that he's going to pour out his spirit upon our sons and daughters and he's going to use them mightily. And God is going to send a revival among the young people that we have never seen before. Hallelujah. And we must continue to pray in all of our churches here and there around the world. God must preserve and keep our young people. How many can say praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. And he said they shall prophesy so I want to, and have visions, praise be to God. And I want to encourage the young people that are here in this convention, as we come together, you reach out to God and let this word be fulfilled in this convention. You prophesy. You open up your eyes and see the glory of Jerusalem and Zion. Hallelujah. This got to happen. We just don't want to continue to have church. We want to experience the power of God. Our God is not dead. He's alive. And he's alive forevermore. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Hallelujah. And in these days, too, just like these radical people, I don't know what you want to call them, all stirred up about Roe versus Way and, and all the things that they're trying to do, we got to be even more about God and the things of God and stand in the gap and hold up the edge. Can somebody say praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Praise be to God. And it says, you old man will dream dreams. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone just called me just before coming to the meeting. And uh, he said, he said, Pastor, can I share something with you quickly? I said, yes, go ahead. He shared a dream. Hallelujah. A beautiful dream about the Lord's dealing with him and his life and his family and getting ready for the coming of the Lord. What's the point? The word of God being fulfilled. This is happening. Praise be to God. And... Uh, I believe this is the hour. This is the need of the hour. Acts chapter 10, read with me, verse 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Uh -huh. um, continue. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter... Because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Thank you. On the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Again, that outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Praise be to God. And in this convention, we must also believe in every meeting we're going to have a real, and as we have tonight, too, beautiful, beautiful. Hallelujah. Even coming here to Nath is for God's presence in such a beautiful way. And the opening of prayer and the worship and everything. You can just feel the moving of the Spirit of God. And God is going to pour out His Spirit. It's going to be a great outpouring. Even tonight, the altar call. We're going to have a wonderful altar call. And I'm going to tell you in a moment what God's going to do because I have it here. Seven things. I'm going to run through them in a moment. What God's going to do in this altar call. And we got to believe. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit was poured out. Now, we, before this experience can take place, there has to be a thirst. We all know these verses. John 7, verse 37. It speaks about being hungry and thirsty. Let's read those verses just to refresh ourselves. John 7 37 to 39. Hallelujah. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture had said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But Praise this be to God. Continue. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe in on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Praise the Lord. So again, if any man thirst, so we have to thirst. Just like here, I just brought this water here because in a moment I'm going to be thirsty. Hallelujah. And I'm going to drink. Hallelujah. That's what we have to do. Now most of us, if not all of us, have had the experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So perhaps maybe in some cases uh, things have happened and you haven't, you know, been praying and getting filled like we had before or we ought to know or we should. But God is going to uh, pour out upon you the Spirit of God. And it's not going to have anything to do with you except you believe. Hallelujah. God's going to, and I was praying, God, you got to do something supernatural. And I'm going to get to the sick in a moment. I want to see the sick healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is going to heal the sick. Hallelujah. As Pastor was saying, believe. As we believe, we're going to see the power of healing. Praise be to God. Even tonight. Hallelujah. And throughout this convention, as God continues to pour out his spirit. Praise be to God. So, he says, if any man thirst, let him come and drink. So tonight, as we begin this convention, let's begin with the thirst. And I know we have that. Because as we spoke to different ones about coming to the convention, so many were so excited. They said, oh, I'm going to the convention after two years, almost three years, and I'm going to this convention. And they came with, listen, 
with an expectation. Hallelujah. I know that God is going to fulfill that expectation that uh, you have in your heart. He has to. We're getting close to the end. And we have to, and this is my point, we have to experience God in a new and living way. Our God is not dead. Our God is alive and he's alive forevermore. He promised to finish the work in the church and he's going to do that. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So tonight, as we come thirsting, Lord, Lord, I need that outpouring. I need the Holy Ghost. I need to be revived again. Praise be to God. When God sees that thirst, God is going to fill you. And all to your belly going to flow rivers of living waters. Hallelujah. It says, living, it says rivers of living water, you're going to come alive. Hallelujah. Spiritually speaking, hallelujah. You may feel in these days... Uh, very difficult times and going through trials and difficulties and you've lost something. Well, that's why God has brought us here in this convention. God's going to revive us again. Hallelujah. Can somebody say amen? amen? Hallelujah. Now, the second thing. Okay. It says, if any man thirsts, that's number one. Number two, um, what we have to do to receive this great outpouring. The word of God tells us in Psalms 81... A verse that perhaps some of us know. Psalms 81, we will read verse 10. 81, 10 says, mm -hmm. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. Praise be to God. So you got to open your mouth wide, and God says, I will fill it. Hallelujah. And when we come to the Lord tonight, to the altar... You stand and say, Lord, I'm thirsty, Lord. Hallelujah. I want to experience my God, number one. Number two, Lord, I'm opening my mouth and I'm opening wide. God says, I will fill it. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And it's like what we're singing a few minutes ago, Acts 3, 19. It talks about a time of refreshing. We'll read that verse as well. And God's going to refresh us. Hallelujah. Acts 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come Hallelujah. from the presence of the Lord. That the times of refreshing may come. Hallelujah. From the presence of God. So this convention also is going to be a time of refreshing. Hallelujah. And uh, we all know that a lot of God's people and a lot of us also have gone through and going through some very difficult times. But God would not let you go through that you cannot bear. And at the same time, especially bringing us to this convention, God's going to give you a, a time of refreshing. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. And um, we know Joel too. Verse 23, it speaks about the former and the latter rain. Hallelujah. Joel 2, verse 23. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately. He will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Hallelujah. And we know that the latter rain is going to be more than the former rain. Hallelujah. That latter, latter rain can, speaks about the great outpouring of the Holy Spirit that Jesus said he's going to do in these days. Hallelujah. And as we go out through these meetings here at the convention, it's going to rain, rain, rain. And don't you miss not one meeting. Hallelujah. Because that one meeting you might not be able to attend or that morning prayer or, or fasting prayer, that may be the meeting that God really wants to speak to you, do something in your life. Hallelujah. But he said he's going to send the latter rain. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Now, in this outpouring, this great outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and I like that great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. That I just see something in the Spirit when you read that. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit. In that outpouring of the Holy Spirit, God is going to work. Sometimes we think when we think God is not working, he's working. And it's not by our feelings or emotions. Again, it's 
Like the Bible says, faith is the confidence of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. God's working. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. And we're going to see also the glory of God. This is going to be a glorious convention. It already began. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Now, in this outpouring of the Holy Spirit, number one, and we sang about it too. Number one, we're going to see the, listen, the church revived. Hallelujah. We're going to see the church revived. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, Jesus says, And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Upon this rock I will build my church. In this great outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the church of Jesus Christ is going to be built. Hallelujah. Paul calls it a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. Hallelujah. And he's going to build his church. Right now when you look around the nations and see what's happening here and there. And, and we all know what's happening in Ukraine and so many other nations. Um, God is going to build his church. Someone sent me a, a little video of something that's happening. This is due to, this is persecution in one of the African nations. It broke my heart. I cried and cried to see, how can people do this to other people, you know? And um, we see all these things happening and, and uh, all over. And even here in this quote-unquote godly nat nation, nation. You see all these things happening. Then you say, where is the church? Where is the church? Well, Jesus said, I will build my church. You hold on to that word. Hallelujah. And, and he's the, in this great outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the church is going to be like, the Bible says, a light set on a hill that cannot be hidden. He says, I'm going to build my church. That means, number one, there's going to be a revival. And I'm not talking about jumping and dancing. There is going to be a move of the Spirit of God. And we in the world is going to see that we have an almighty God and he's on the throne. And he said what he said and he's going to do it. In these days, the church is going to be glorious. Hallelujah. And I want to encourage the saints, don't you run and hide. You stand up strong and you shine for Jesus. Hallelujah. You go out and do the work of the Lord. Hallelujah. And bring many to the Lord. And in these days, that's one of the things I believe that all of us, we have to do. We have to get a, a vision of reaching out to the lost. Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost everywhere. We got to reach out to the lost souls. We got to go out into our communities, into our universities and places of work. We got to reach out to souls. We got to see the Spirit of God move in these days in a great and mighty way. Can we say praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you all know my testimony. I'm not going to share it, but um, someone reached out to me. And that person wouldn't stop. And I was working there at my workplace. He invited me to a Bible study. And I told him I'd come, but I was lying. And uh, he called me, and I was surprised. And I, made, and I told him another lie. He continued, then I told him another lie. So it got to lie number three. And then still I told lie number four. I said, now wait a minute. I said, okay, I'm going to go to this Bible study. But I'm not coming back. Like Sister Olivia was saying, living a life in the world. And uh, when I came, I sat there. And I still remember that night. This was in Washington, Carroll Avenue. Pastor Don was giving a study on predestination, never heard anything like that before in my life. And I only remember the title. But what touched me, after the Bible study was over, 
the love of the saints and the servants of God. And you talking about Sister Levy, you're talking about worldliness. You should have saw me. You wouldn't know if I was a guy or a lady. That's how bad it was. My long hair, Sister Lisa remembers, Pastor Greg. And I, you know, and you know something, the people in the, in the church and the faithfulness just walked me and loved me all up. And, and then Pastor Rick was the one. He said, look, they call me Junior. Junior, I want you to come for the prayer meeting. I said, uh, yeah, I come for the prayer meeting. Yes, I come. I didn't know anything about a prayer meeting. And somehow the power of God moved. Saturday night, like Sister was saying, out in, in the world, Saturday night, I went to the faith home, and that night, Sister Alice was singing, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. And that's the song, that the joy of salvation came upon me, and I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and my life changed. Hallelujah. 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 So, dear... Um, Child of God, we have to go after souls in these last days. Wherever we are, we got to reach out to the lost. We got to share the word of God, like the Bible says, in season and out of season. Because we don't want to see souls perish. And, G and I believe, like it says again, he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And spirit of conviction and, and uh, uh, repentance is going to come upon them. And God's going to bring a great harvest in before the coming of the Lord. So in this great outpouring, the first thing is we're going to see the church revive. The church has to get revived because we are the light of the world. And we actually have the power. And we, I, I believe we're going to see the people of God in every nation rise up. And we're going to shake the earth. Hallelujah. And in the midst of that revival... The rapture would take place. Hallelujah. Jesus was come. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Church, we got to believe that. These are the days of his power. These are the days of his glory. These are the days he's going to pour out his spirit upon our flesh. Can we praise the Lord tonight? Hallelujah. 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 Number two, in this revival, in this outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we're going to experience restoration. Psalm 51, verse 12. We're going to see a beautiful restoration. Many has gone away from the house of God. But in this revival, we're going to see restoration. Psalm 51, verse 12. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Hallelujah. And we know that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So in this outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we are going to see and experience a restoration. I know in a lot of the churches, and not only here in America and Canada, but all over, many has gone away from the house of God, gone away from the Lord. But the word of God stands. The word of God says he sent his word, and it's not going to return unaccomplished. We are going to see a mighty restoration. Those of God coming back, they're coming back, they're coming back. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. And we must not give up on them. And we must not look at their failures and their sin because all have sinned have come short of the glory of God. Can we say praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I know all of you love souls. I love souls. And we want to see them come back. And a lot of our churches, and you all know, uh, a lot of beautiful ones has gone away from the Lord. Praise be to God. And we must pray them back. We must pray and God must give us wisdom and understanding and love. Because love never fails. Hallelujah. That doesn't mean compromising. 
That means we must love them, pray for them, and, and help them to find a way. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have a situation here, my family, some of you know, in uh, Richmond, Virginia. After the convention, Lord willing, I'll be going there to see the, my, some of my family I haven't saw in many years. Get to the point, my cousin's daughter, beautiful girl, oh my God. Uh, she took her life. And I said, what? And they went in the room. They saw her hanging. And I said, what happened? And the point is, I told the parents, I wish I would have known. I wish I would have known. I would have done whatever I could, calling, emailing, whatever, to try to rescue that young life. Souls are dying everywhere, and we have the word of life. Praise be to God. There's going to be a great restoration. Many of, many of your children, many parents here sitting here, your children have gone different places. God's going to bring them back to Jesus. Hallelujah. As this great outpouring takes place. Number three, in this great outpouring... <clears throat> We are going to see, like we were singing earlier, the power of, of the Holy Ghost. We are going to see the power of healing. The power of healing. We all know the verses, verses in Exodus 15, verse 26. I am the Lord that heals thee. And as we have been traveling and going different places and praying for the saints... There's so many having different, all kinds of infirmities. But I want to encourage your faith tonight, dear ones. Don't you let go of the word of God. He said, I said my word and my word healed them. Hallelujah. We, in this convention also, people are going to testify. You know, that night, uh, uh, this, that prayer, that fasting and prayer, whatever it may be, that youth meeting, whatever, that young adults meeting, God healed me. And we all have different infirmities. But remember, one of the benefits of Jesus dying on the cross, by his stripes, we were healed. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. By his stripes, we were healed. And what we need What's going to heal us is our faith. Look here in Mark chapter 5, verse 34. Mark 5, 34. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith had made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Notice, he didn't say, Woman, thy faith has healed you. I'm not, no. He said, Daughter. Hallelujah. That was a child of God. He says, daughter, and he's going to say to you and me, daughter, son. And he didn't say the pastor's faith or your parents' faith or husband or wife. He said, your faith has healed you. And sometimes, like it says, uh, sometimes good things takes time. And just like this, this story here, you know what she went through, 12 long years and during those 12 long years, God was engineering everything for the appointed time. God has an appointed time for your healing. And I believe it's going to be now. Hallelujah. In this convention. Hallelujah. And when finally uh, uh, she heard that Jesus was coming by. See, we all know faith comes by hearing. And as the songs come forward, and as the word comes forward, God is going to be speaking to us. You get a hold of that word like Mary, and she pondered it to her heart. She held on to it, and it came to pass. Jesus was born. Hallelujah. You hold on to that word, and you do your part by reaching out to Jesus. And she didn't grab him. It was just a touch. Just a little touch. That's all you need. And when she touched him, power, virtue went forward. And that very hour, that woman was healed from that 
issue of blood for 12 long years healed. So child of God, let the Holy Spirit build up your faith and reach out to God. Even tonight at the altar, you confess what the sickness may be and say, Lord, I know that your word is true. And I know that you can heal me. And if you touch him with your faith, he's going to touch you with his power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got a call a few weeks ago. And somebody called and said, Pastor, can you please pray for this sister? She's, she's, she can't sleep. And she's trying, and this was going on for days and days and days. She said, she, she, she can't sleep. And uh, can you please pray? And this was on the phone. So I said, yeah, we can pray. And uh, so uh, we had a conference call. So we prayed. And the Lord touched my heart. We just cried out to God, Lord, you got to heal her, Lord. You got to heal her, Lord. And we prayed. After I finished praying, the sister that called asking for prayer for that sister, I said, no, you pray. Because two or three, the better. So the other sister comes to me, pray, <laughs> me, yes, you pray. She prayed and prayed and prayed, and we thank God. The next day, the sister called back. She said, Pastor, last night, after so many days, not able to sleep, and that's a terrible thing. The next day, she called back. The sister called back and said, she slept last night all night long. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? And I know you have seen and heard testimonies like that too. What's the point? Faith. Believe. Like he told this woman here, your faith has healed you. Hallelujah. And you can stand in the gap for someone else and pray for that loved one. Lord, heal her. Heal him. Heal that child. God in these days, in this great outpouring of the Holy Spirit, God wants to manifest his power and healing. Why? Because so many are beginning to doubt God. And they say, well, Pastor, we've been praying, but I'm not healed. We don't see the healing. Don't give up your faith. You hold on to your faith. But I believe in this great outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we are going, and in this convention, we are going to see miracles of healing. Child of God, believe, 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 and you shall see the glory of God. Can somebody praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. 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 God is going to heal his people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number four. There are going to be healings from depression. God, in Acts 10, 22, I'm sorry, Acts 10, 28, how Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost, went about doing good everywhere. Healing all those that was oppressed of the devil. What's the point? There are so many are going through depression. So many, even young people. So many. And the word of God says, Jesus was anointed to heal, to deliver from oppression. Praise be to God. So, if there's some kind of uh, depression in your life or my life, as God brings this mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit, you take that depression and say, Lord, I give it to you. I'm not going to worry anymore. It's better to have faith than to worry. Hallelujah. And it's real. And you see now as you go to the different states and you go down the road, you see so many people. They, what do they call it? Insane? You know, so many so, Lord, how could that be? It's amazing. And the bottom line is, in a lot of these cases, it's because of the breakdown of the family, the whole. That's a whole other subject. But the point is, God is going to bring healing 
of depression. God never intended for us to go around depressed in word. The word of God says, cast all of your cares upon the Lord because he cares for us. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. So in this convention, you just take, well, let me, let me, let me say this. The other day I was sharing there in the church, and I was telling the dear ones, you know, I don't exactly remember that, what we are talking about, I, but I do remember, remember this. I said, all of my problems and my situations, I don't know about all of you, but I left them outside. Hallelujah. Leave them outside. Hallelujah. Who the sun sets free. He is free indeed. Hallelujah. Jesus set us free. Praise be to God. And we got to fight. That's the thing. That's, the, that's one of the main points. The word of God says fight a good fight of faith. See, it goes together. Fight faith. Fight faith. Fight faith. Fight a good fight of faith. And what? Lay hold on eternal life. Hallelujah. I shall not be moved. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. And the devil can't move you. Those problems can't move you. And we were sharing about that also, about fighting against these things. And praise be to God. Some people really rose up and they begin to fight. See, if we don't, listen, if we don't fight, we lose. It's that simple. And if we fight, we win. And we're going to win because he's won. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. It doesn't, doesn't matter how you feel or what the situation is. Jesus says, I have overcome. In the world we have had tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. So we have to fight against these things. And again, don't wait for the feelings to come. It might not come. It's the faith. It's the important thing is that you believe. It's the faith. Hallelujah. And when God gives you that faith, you stand on that faith and you fight and fight and fight and fight and you shall overcome. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Number five. Number five is, uh, well, let me read the verse. James chapter 2. James chapter 2. We read verse six, 17 and 18. Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Show me your faith by your works and vice versa. The point is, loss of faith. I have met some of the saints and they have told me, brother, you know, I lost your faith. I've lost my faith. No, you haven't lost your faith. You're just discouraged. You need to, uh, like the, the Bible says, the righteous falls seven times, but get back up. Get up! And... Um, you get a hold of that faith. The Bible says, come to the throne of grace and attain mercy and find grace in time of need. Find that faith. Hallelujah. It's faith that moves mountains. And you don't need a lot of faith to move a mountain. Just a small grain of faith as a mustard seed. And you may, your faith may have been in an attack, you know, maybe through sickness. A job situation, especially when people started losing their job, who they, 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 were, they took a stand against this vaccine and so on and so forth. Some people were afraid. And there are those, though, that stood, I shall not. I, I, it's, it, I have convictions. Praise be to God. And God doesn't condemn us. He forgives us. Hallelujah. You rise up in your faith. And how do we get how do, how do we get it back? How do we get it back? The word of God tells us in Hebrews 12, looking unto Jesus, who's the author and the finisher of our faith. So tonight we come, we look to Jesus. He's the author of our faith. Hallelujah. And the disciples pray, Lord, increase our faith. Praise be to God. So dear child of God, don't let the devil deceive us. 
Hallelujah. You get a hold of the faith of the Son of God and you continue to go forward. This great outpouring of the Holy Spirit, God is going to revive us again. Hallelujah. And in this convention, oh, we're going to experience a revival. We're going to experience the Holy Spirit. And I believe this with all my heart. Listen to me. I'm telling the truth. I believe with all my heart something, something, something is going to happen. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. We got to see it. And we are going to because our God is alive. Hallelujah. Praise God. Number six. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In this great outpouring, Matthew 3, 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Number seven, I'm sorry, number six is fire. Hallelujah. There's fire in this outpouring. And I know all of us, we want God to rekindle that fire again in our soul. Hallelujah. And the word of God says he's going to baptize you with fire. And we need that fire. Hallelujah. And as we see iniquity just increasing, we got to stand up and be that much stronger. Hallelujah. I remember Pastor Don telling someone once, they were saying, oh, Pastor, uh, this thing is too strong. This thing is too strong. Pastor said, listen, you got to be stronger. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. You got to be stronger. Hallelujah. And in these days, in this great outpouring of the Holy Spirit, it's going to be fire. Hallelujah. We need that Holy Ghost fire. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's, that's the need of the hour. And then all the other things will come in place. Hallelujah. We, but we need that Holy Ghost fire. We need the power of God. That's what we need. And then we're going to go out there and we're going to be able to stand against all those things that will come against us. And by the grace of God, we shall overcome. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Number seven. Uh, we all know Acts chapter 2 verse 4. That was the first outpouring. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. That was the first outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the earth. And Jesus said that I must go away, that the Comforter will come, the outpouring will come. And they were there waiting and waiting, and we all know the story. And then the time came. Remember, God has an appointed time. The time came on the day of Pentecost. And in, when that outpouring took place, the word of God says it was like a mighty Russian wind. Hallelujah. And it filled all the house. And it says that they all were filled. Not some of them. They all were filled. But the only way we can all be filled is that we all have to be thirsty. And Jesus says, drink, and out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They all were filled with the Holy Ghost, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. So... Number seven is the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. And if there is anyone here in this convention and you have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it's a promise. It says, repent, be baptized, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And you come, if you, even when you come tonight to the altar, you come and say, Lord... I need that great outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Fill me now, fill me now. And God is going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. And with fire. 
And for the rest of us, as children of God and servants of God, we need Holy Ghost fire. We need that. And when we go outside our doors and go here and there, we got to be on fire for God. I tell you, it is terrible out there. Hallelujah. And it's going to get worse. So as it gets worse, the fire of God must burn even more. Let that fire burn. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. And when we go out there and we reach out to souls and do the work of the Lord, hallelujah, the fire is burning and we are going to make a difference wherever we are, wherever we go, hallelujah, because of this great outpouring of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. Jesus said again in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, hallelujah, and your sons and daughters, there's going to be a mighty revival among the young people. We're going to see it, hallelujah. Right now, when you look at the state of the church, sometimes you lose faith, you get discouraged, but don't let that happen. The word of God says we don't walk by sight, but we walk by faith. Jesus said, I will build my church. He's going to do it. He's going to do it because the word of God has gone forward and it's going to accomplish its purpose. Can we all praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And one last thing before we sing and come to the altar. In these days of convention and after, even after convention, dear child of God, you got to be excited about your Jesus. Hallelujah. If you're not excited about Jesus and his coming and what he's doing in these days and seeing the word of God come to pass, then something else is going to take you away. Hallelujah. You know, <clears throat> thinking about the early days and all God has done over the years and us here, even just three minutes ago, I was just thinking about these things. It just touched my heart. And all of our loved ones, like um, uh, Tabitha was saying, how Pastor Gary now and Pastor Clay and others gone be with the Lord. Remember those beautiful times. Hallelujah. And even our elders from India and those who have come. Pastor was talking about Pastor S.B. Ernest last time. So we know, oh, I remember those days. Sister Alice, Pastor God, and we are the last ones. We got to make it. Hallelujah. We have to. Hallelujah. And it's the time now for us to rise up. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. It's time now to experience this outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And he says, open your mouth wide and I will feel it. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. When the anointing comes upon you, as we heard also, it will break the yoke. Hallelujah. There's many yokes upon us. But tonight, they're coming off. Tomorrow, they're coming off. The next day, the anointing breaks the yoke. Hallelujah. Believe it, child of God. Exercise your faith. And you're going to experience this great outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Can we put our hands together and praise God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 And as we come forward, again going back to uh, point number three, healing. Child of God, put your hand or speak the word of faith to that area and be healed. Hallelujah. Be healed. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Just to save time and all, as we're singing to the Lord, we're going to come to the altar and we're going to look to God in prayer. Lord, I need that great outpouring of the Holy Spirit you say you're going to do in these days. You come forward. And the servants of God, we're going to come forward and we're going to pray for the people of God tonight. And, and we're going to look to God for a mighty, mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit and power. Let's all come forward. Hallelujah. 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 
Aleluya, 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 aleluya. Oh, aleluya. Lord Jesus, aleluya. Gracias, Señor. Gracias, Padre. Aleluya. Gracias, Señor. Aleluya. Rita la machata la vaca la machica la da. Aleluya. Aleluya. Before Pastor Abraham comes and prays, uh, we just want to remind everyone um, we will have night prayers tonight. So following this meeting, we'll be coming back here within an hour or so to have night prayers. Once again, for that great outpouring of the Holy Spirit, shall we praise God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh God, thank you. Thank you. I did uh, ask Pastor Greg for a little time this evening before we close to say this prayer. We prayed last night among those who were there as I arrived. The prayer that is taught to us through the doctrine of the victory that Jesus won through his death and resurrection through Pastor S.B. Ernest, as you heard his name mentioned, some, most of, some of you, the old saints, know him. So I just want to quote the scripture. Why? Um, I'm not supposed to be here otherwise. I should not be here otherwise. It's only to the power of that prayer. Till the last moment, there's no way I could have come here. Till the last moment, till I went to the desk. But we kept praying through, claiming this word, that is Colossians, if you like to project that verse up on the screen. Colossians 2.15. Why I'm saying this prayer publicly, I feel the urge we should pray tonight. I'll tell you why. Colossians 2.15. This is the doctrine about the death, the victory that Jesus won through his death and resurrection. Uh, revealed through his apostles. And so, according to this verse... Jesus has spoiled through his death, he spoiled the principalities and powers. Spoiled, it means he fully disarmed. So the teaching is, Jesus through his death fully disarmed Satan who is the head, together with his principalities and powers. So pastor taught, principalities and powers also mean the diabolical forces of Satan. In short, all the demons. So Jesus has spoiled, fully disarmed Satan and his principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly. When they were defeated through his death on the cross, they were put to open shame. Then triumphing over them in it. Jesus triumphed over them in, in, it, in the cross. In his death, he took total victory. How did he take total victory? According to, first of all, Hebrews 2.14, through his death, he might destroy him that had the power of death that is the devil. He took total victory, triumphed. So, by destroying Satan through his death, the word destroyed in Greek means reduced to zero, made powerless. Thereby, Jesus triumphed over them in the cross. Destroying Satan means he destroyed all the principalities and powers too. They were all reduced to zero, made powerless. I'm telling you, giving this explanation now because we're going to pray after this, claiming the same scriptures. And then... Jesus triumphed over them in it, over Satan and his principalities and powers. According to, through his death, Genesis 3.15 says, The seed of the woman shall bruise thy head. It shall bruise thy heel. On the cross of Calvary, Satan did all that he could. All Satan and all the demons went against Jesus with all their might. They bruised his heel. But they couldn't prevail to bring sin in Jesus' life. Finally, having overcome them all, finally it was Jesus' turn. As Pastor has been as in his message, he said, Now the Father said to the Son, Son, now bruise him under your feet. Finally, on the cross of Calvary, through his death, Jesus bruised the head of Satan. It says here in verse 15, 
crush the head of Satan. And what pastor taught the head of Satan means his wisdom, his power, his authority. His wisdom means his deceitful wisdom. Such as this lockdown, he doesn't say, like it says in Revelation 12 verse 5, the dragon, uh, Revelation 12, 4 and 5, the dragon tried to swallow up the man-child, but he, the man-child overcame the overcomers. They overcame him. They were caught up to the throne. Uh, and therefore, he's not saying, I don't want the man-child to be formed. That's why I'm stopping these meetings. He gives some other reason which will be accepted by all. That's his call. That his call is deceitful wisdom. But we know why these meetings were stopped. Satan has none other plan than to stop the man-child from being caught up to the throne. But now he has failed. And he's going to still going to be destroyed. Even once again, we are going to claim tonight, we are going to claim this verse once again. So Jesus triumphed over them in it. First, he destroyed Satan through his death, reduced to zero, reduced him to zero, made him powerless. Secondly, he crushed the head of Satan through his death. When it says he crushed the head of Satan, he crushed the head of all the principalities and powers too. Then what is not mentioned in Colossians 2.15, pastor taught, Jesus triumphed over them through his resurrection. That's the verses quoted from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19 to 22. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who are to believe? According to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought. So when Jesus arose by the mighty power, was, this is what happened, verse 20 uh, to 22, uh, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, Jesus was set down at the right hand of the Father. Verse 21, far above all principality and power and might and dominion. These are the good angels. Then he was set far above every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Every name means every human authority. Not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. In that which is to come, as was taught, uh, it, was also, it can also mean the millennium. Then, and had put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. So all things are put under his feet here. Forever and ever, Jesus, when he rose from the dead, he destroyed Satan and all the demons. They have been utterly destroyed under his feet. So now when we claim these verses and come to the end claiming the victory through his death first and the victory now through his resurrection, verse 19 Having confessed the scriptures and having heard it, faith will be created in our heart. As you heard in the message, faith. Faith will then make the power of God, the power of God will be drawn through that faith. God will send the power according to the faith that you have in your heart. We heard in the message today, verse 19. It's not ordinary power. This doctrine about the death and resurrection of Christ, it's not ordinary power. Verse 19. When you believe, what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who are to believe? When you believe, it is not just power. It is not just greatness of his power. It is called the exceeding greatness of his power. So how do you get it? When you believe the scriptures, keep believing it and speaking in tongues. Believing it and speaking in tongues, the power will increase, 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 till it becomes the exceeding greatness. Now one more thing the saints taught is again taught by the uh, Pastor Espinosa. He taught the prayer group. One of them was Pastor K.G. George. He taught us. We, 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 see, we saw the life of Pastor Espinosa. He got healed from more than 20 heart attacks. He died many times, came back to life, all through these prayers. So these prayers are not theory. It is practical experience of this saint, which the Holy Spirit taught so this is what Pastor mentioned just now in his message, James 5.16. The prayer that is taught revealed is a mystery or a teaching which God has revealed through his apostles, taught by the Holy Spirit. When you pray according to that prayer, it will move the hand of God. There's a song we sing, nothing is impossible when we believe. Faith moves the hand of God. This faith, God has taught how to pray through the Holy Spirit is revealed. When we pray in that manner, faith moves the hand of God. So what kind of prayer is this? This is called the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous. We are all righteous. We may all have our own ways of praying. 
But when we pray as taught by God, revealed through his apostles, revealed by the Holy Spirit, that prayer will become the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous. Okay, why are we praying this prayer now? Not, not only because uh, we want the Lord to give total liberty for every, uh, all the saints to be able to freely gather. Now, you know some of our saints, just up north, they are told that if they go back, how many days do they have to be quarantined? quarantined? Two weeks. So some are hesitating to come. So, and uh, so our dear pastor down from uh, Australia is supposed to come here. Now I came to know it's not anything else. It is the condition there in the government that's causing him the hindrance to come out, except through vaccination. So therefore, it's true we are exper experiencing liberty. That power got broken the day that morning I was leaving here, that there's no hindrance for me to come in here. That morning, by God's grace, through all the prayers, your prayers, surely if you didn't pray, I wouldn't be here. Then the prayers of the saints in other places too. So, why we need to pray? This prayer is like the time of the Egyptians when they kept Israel from going to worship God. Let my people go that they may worship me. So, Pharaoh didn't want them to go. So, they still stopped, though Pharaoh was uh, seeing God's judgments upon the Egyptians, when Moses and Aaron pronounced the judgments upon Pharaoh and the Egyptians, yet he, God said, he hardened Pharaoh's heart. Why? It says here, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. So, but Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you that I may lay my hand upon Egypt and bring forth mine armies and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great judgments. So God wants to bring us a great, God wants to do great things. It says here about further, it says in Romans 9, 17, even for the same purpose I have raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Okay, what's the name you're going to claim? Pastor George taught us, he said, whenever you start any prayer, you must claim, Jesus Christ is Lord. Why? When you claim Jesus Christ is Lord, according to Philippians 2, verse 9, 2, 2, verse 9 to 11, every knee shall bow. We can say things in heaven can speak of the angels, things on earth, we and all other human authorities, everything. Then things under the earth, all the demons too have to bow down and confess the name we are exalting, Jesus Christ is Lord. So in this prayer we are claiming Jesus Christ is the Lord of hosts. Because it says, not by mind, nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain? These hindrances. Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain. Zerubbabel laid the foundation stone of the temple, and he laid the headstone thereof, shouting, Grace, grace unto it. He is the type of the Lord Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Another name for the Lord Jesus is the Lord of hosts. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O Satan, and your principalities and powers? Before the Lord Jesus, the Lord of hosts, you shall become a plain. So, now, God is going to do something wonderful. It is as we claim the scriptures and the name of Jesus, who is the Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of hosts. Jesus Christ, the Lord of hosts. The Lord is going to show his power. What did he do to the land of Egypt? He destroyed Pharaoh's kingdom. Pharaoh is a type of Satan. So by all these prayers, in this particular matter, Pharaoh's kingdom is being destroyed. Destroyed. Now a little more is left for our saint to come from down under, for these saints from up north to be able to come and go so. Like that there are certain countries still the devil is holding on. But today, the Lord as he spoke through his word this evening through the message, he says, through you, the church, God is going to, uh, he is going to uh, do great things in the whole world. He says, the word of God from tonight's message, God says he's going to turn the whole, touch the whole world through the church. 
and it says, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. I will build my church upon this rock. So now, the Lord is going to do it. That he's going to show his power in all this uh, against Satan. And his name is going to be declared throughout all the earth. In Australia, it's going to be declared. This power that we are claiming now through the name. In Canada, it's going to be declared. In Fiji, it's going to be declared. In PNG, they're all not free. They cannot come out. So therefore... We are going to pray now. Whatever is remaining now, why I have chose this time? Because according to Joshua chapter 23 verse 10, why did I choose this time? According to the urge that God gave me is Joshua 23 verse 10. He says, And one of you shall chase a thousand, for the Lord your God, he it is that fighteth for you. So therefore, one shall chase a thousand. Literally it was there in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, we may say one may chase a thousand, but there's a verse that says in Ephesians 3.20, Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to his power that worketh in us. So in the New Testament, he does exceeding abundantly. So one will chase a thousand or maybe even more. We do not know. But definitely one will chase a thousand. So now you count how many of us are here. So, but the point is, you must claim the scripture. Claim the name of Jesus, the Lord of hosts. Then at the end, all must get this anointing, the exceeding greatness of his power. All right? So don't look at me. I am not able to do anything. It's the Lord Jesus, the Lord of hosts. So whatever word God is now saying now to us, we are going to claim it. And I will speak on the mic so that you can hear me saying the scriptures. You say the scripture yourself. But if you are not sure how to say it, you can listen to me and you can repeat it. And so we will just pray at the end. I'm going to ask all of you to get filled in the Spirit. Those who are starting to get filled in the Spirit, you get filled in the Spirit. But at the end, I will make, us, make, make, make everyone to get filled in the Spirit together. Shall we now start? I repeat the prayer. Jesus has, through his death, Jesus is the Lord of hosts. Start by exalting his name. Secondly, he has fully disarmed Satan and his principalities and powers through his death. He has triumphed over them in it, taken total victory by destroying Satan through his death and his principalities and powers. He has taken triumph, taken total victory by crushing the head of Satan and his principalities and powers. Then these are the scriptures you must tell Satan in Jesus' name like Jesus told Satan when he came to tempt him, it is written. So tell it to him, through Jesus' death, he has fully disarmed you in Jesus' name. Through Jesus' death, he has triumphed over you by destroying you, reducing to zero, made you powerless in Jesus' name. Through Jesus' death, he has triumphed over you by crushing your head in Jesus' name. The victory of his resurrection, you confess before the Lord Jesus. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Jesus is the Lord of all. Jesus is the Lord of all. Yes, Satan, Jesus fully disarmed you through his death. Jesus, oh, triumphed over you. Taken total victory by destroying you through his death and you and your principalities for powers in Jesus' name. Jesus triumphed over you. Taken total victory by crushing her in the seed of the woman. Shall bruise the head. Your head is crushed. You don't have any wisdom or deceitful wisdom or power and authority. You and your principalities and powers, your heads are crushed in Jesus' name. Lord, we claim the victory through your resurrection. We claim the victory through your resurrection. What is the exceeding greatness of his power? To a swear to believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead, set him at his own right hand, in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power, might and dominion in every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and that put all things under his feet, forever and ever, you have crushed Satan under your feet and you have a name above every human authority they have to obey you in Jesus name Lord now it says not by might nor by power but by my spirit said the Lord of hosts who art thou Satan and all your principalities and powers like that great mountain before Zerubbabel, that is before the Lord Jesus, who is the Lord of hosts, you shall become a plain in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, everyone believing the scriptures in your heart, let us all get filled in the Spirit. Hallelujah.
Amen. It is mentioned in the message, according to your faith, daughter, your faith has made thee whole. So, you are believing and I am believing, nothing will be left. Nothing. Nothing of all the hindrances will be left. According to your faith, be it unto you. Shall we praise God? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. As we get filling this, as we got filled in the spirit just now, got into Romans to the 16 verse 20, through that anointing, the God of peace has bruised Satan, has destroyed Satan, and all his principalities and powers under our feet shall be praised God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for the work you did for us, which you finished for us on the cross of Calvary. Lord, our gathering this evening is not in, by any ordinary means. It's all because of what you did for us through your death on the cross of Calvary. Your saints have claimed, your saints here, all over the U.S. especially have claimed these words. The words considering your victory, the, the victory you won through your death on the cross and through your resurrection. And that is how these powers have been broken thus far. And even now, once again, O oh Lord of hosts, you have done it once again, Lord, through all hearing the cries of your saints. Lord, we thank you. Oh God, oh Holy Spirit, thank you for destroying these powers tonight. Oh God of peace, we thank you for bruising Satan and all these demons on our feet tonight. Yes, Lord. Through the church, we heard tonight in the message, by the church, through the church that has received this mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the whole world will be changed to God. Oh, Lord, we thank you. The gates of hell shall not prevail against your church, Lord. Lord, thank you for every word you spoke from your throne above tonight. Let it bring a great work of restoration. Those who have left and gone away. Yes, Lord. Let us, Lord, if we deal with them with wisdom and love. And let us, Lord, who oh, help us to cry out to you so that you may break those powers that have taken them away and restore them, O oh God. Bringing back our children. Maybe the world has taken them away. Maybe all the sins and Lord pleasures, O oh Lord, of sin have taken them away. You will bring back our children to O oh God. Yes, O oh God. You said your young men shall see visions, O oh God. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy, O oh God. You will do it to God. You said it and you will do it. Wherever we thank you, Lord, do this work. We are just yielding ourselves. We are to move as you move us, O oh God. Holy Spirit, take control of each one of our lives, Lord. As we heard, whether it be through the message, whether it be in the morning praising, whether it be through the words of the song, or the prophecy, whatever it be, help us to cling on to you, claim those scriptures, hold on to you, with faith, so that you may do great things, Lord. Whatever that proceeds from your mouth, help us to believe it, claim it, so that you may do great things in each one of our lives, individually, collectively. The whole land is going to be touched by the church of God. We thank you, Lord. Once again, we give you all the glory and honor and praise. You alone are worthy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each and every one of us until Jesus appears in all his glory. Amen. Shall we all shout a hallelujah? Hallelujah. God bless.
precio. Remember again, 